Growing up, I saw a number of games come along that, in their own special way, transcended their creator's ambition and transformed into cult classics. And one of these was the DOS dogfighter Sopwith. Behold it in all its majesty! Sopwith, or Soppy as we eventually came to call it, was created back in 1984 by David L. Clark of BMB CompuScience. It was initially used to show off the Imaginet proprietary networking system developed by the company that would allow for multiplayer. Unfortunately, that tech was a bit of a dud. However, it was the single player campaign that was subsequently far more popular, and it led to a quick fire sequel, Sopwith 2, which is what I played. In it, you navigated an old Sopwith biplane along a 2D side-scrolling level with the goal of destroying all the enemy structures by either dropping bombs or using your front-facing guns. A deceptively simple premise for what actually turned out to be a fairly complex little time killer. While many primitive DOS games focused on one, maybe two mechanics to create their gameplay, Sopwith juggled a whole bunch of different factors at once that kept my friends and I hooked on this little gem for more than a few years. For instance, the game had an early take on physics, as bombs, debris, and stalled aircraft would all travel through the air with realistic inertia. Flocks of birds could be startled, sending deadly pixelated pigeons all over the screen, there was a cow on the runway you could shoot. Buildings could fire back at you, making long-range bomb attacks the less risky option, but still super difficult to pull off. You even had the ability to flip your plane with the press of a button and invert your controls. This would allow for some quick manoeuvring if your brain could keep up with it all. Mine couldn't. But what made all these mechanics gel together was the addition of an enemy AI opponent that seriously increased the game's difficulty, but also the excitement. I was writing checks my body couldn't cash, and I was doing it all in a purple pixelated biplane of destruction. Ah, I remember all the drawn out dogfights, the daring escapes, and the risky maneuvers through falling debris. Actually, to be fair, this extreme level of nostalgia might have something to do with the fact that this game was one of the first to infiltrate my school's computer network. No one quite knows how it got there, but it wasn't long before whole classrooms were full of daring DOS pilots, all navigating their way across the four-colour CGA horizon, listening to that familiar jingle and alt f 4 just as the teacher decided to walk to the back of the class and see what all the excitement was about. Sure, we may have missed out on some important mathematics theory or some essential essay writing skills, but if there's ever a day where I need a crack team of World War I biplane pilots that can fly it with just two buttons, I know exactly who to call.